Hi guys. Hey. Uh, yeah, we got Maddie Shiloh here. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Hang on, let me throw on my headset so I can hear you guys a little better. Thank you. Ooh. We should. Yeah, we're gonna move so the window's not behind us. About to say you are in profile at this point. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> So yeah, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah. Oh, like, happy to do it. Yeah. So um, I'll just start off with the big one. <laughs> what are your beliefs? <laughs> Since you're recording this, I am a flat earther. I believe that the globe in a court of law can't be proven anymore. And that we are living on a stationary fixed disc with a dome inside it. Uh, how many references can I give you? It's a firmament. It's a planetarium, a terrarium, a snow globe. You're living inside a Hollywood backlot. It's the Truman Show, only much, much bigger. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, how about the next big question? The, um... <laughs> Oh, I'm sure you've got a few. <laughs> That's usually what it starts is just a row and row of questions ever, ever more complex. But go ahead. Um, what kind of led you down this path? You know, what, uh, what got you started with this? How did it start? Um, I was a conspiracy guy for the better part of 20 years. Casual conspiracy. I didn't, you know, hide in, in a dark place and watch Batman movies all the time. <laughs> and everything was shades of black and gray. Uh, I got into conspiracies back in the early 90s with the wonderful Oliver Stone film JFK. Until then, I honestly didn't think there was such a thing as a conspiracy. I didn't think that people lied about anything. Why would they? Why would authority lie to you? Naive. I grew up on an <laughs> island in the middle of the, you know, up in the corner of the Northwest. Very sheltered. Uh, literally, you know, it's like <laughs> until I got to college, I didn't even know there were other religions, to be honest. So from the early 90s up until the middle of 2014, I kind of dabbled. I mean, I knew, if, especially once the internet got running and YouTube got running where you can go down all these rabbit holes, I was in, I, I knew about every conspiracy out there. And everybody's even, you know, even you guys, probably not conspiracy people, you've heard of Flat Earth. Everybody has. That's the one really interesting thing about it is like everybody's heard of it. Everybody hates it. They just wave it off. It's like, whatever, flat earth. It's stupid. It's ridiculous. Why would you ever look at something like that? And in 2014, I was what I call conspiracy bored. I had looked at just about everything, nothing new under the sun. And and it was out there in the corner of my vision. It's always been there. And I said, you know what? I'm going to click on this. You know, it was there were just a couple videos on YouTube. There was not a lot of content in 2014. And I was going, yeah, fine, I'll click on it. And I remember... This was one of the first indicators for me, and I don't think I talked about it in the clues, if you watch the clues, which was um, I got physically flushed when I clicked on it, meaning that I was physically embarrassed. Now, that alone shouldn't be an indicator of anything, but I've been down a lot of weird, you guys probably have too, I've been in a lot of weird places on the <laughs> internet, right? <laughs> There's some really out, far out stuff that you don't, you know, look over your shoulder, it's like, God, I hope nobody saw me click on that. <laughs> you know, really, really odd corners of the internet. And when I saw this, I, I was like, immediately got embarrassed. I mean, flushed. I was going, what is wrong with me? Why would I get embarrassed about something like this? This is stupid. It's not even, you know, it's not even porn, for God's sake. <laughs> so why was I getting embarrassed? And then I, I, I looked at it, and the first thing I saw was a guy in Germany. The, the video was in German about how he's talking about the flight routes in the Southern Hemisphere. Don't make any, don't make any sense. I was going, okay. That's interesting. And he goes, yeah, but it, but they do make sense, if, but the earth is flat. But that's crazy. So it can't be that. It's like, all right, right. And then I ran into another video by a guy, uh, an, a painter in Canada, in Montreal, Canada, who said that he went to a high-level NASA party. And during that party, it was kind of disclosed that the world was not what we thought it was. And everyone was just keeping it under wraps. And I thought... That was a very, very interesting. I won't go into the story too much. By the way, how much, <laughs> how much, how much time do we, or you, do you want to do? Just whenever? Uh, okay. You, yeah. Okay. So to some, you know, some people say, oh yeah, let's talk about Flat Earth in 15 minutes. What's going on? <laughs> flat Earth yeah, in 15 minutes. No, we got all sorts of time. As long as you'd like. Okay. So I saw that, I saw that story that he did. He was barely just rattling it off to his girlfriend. She finally pinned him down sober and sat him <laughs> down on the couch. 
and and had him do this interview. And I thought it was really good. I thought it was it gave me one of those tingly things. Where I was going, okay, this is an interesting story. Could even be a potentially little sci-fi movie of the week type thing. But like anybody, I try to shoot it down, and that's the biggest mistake. Any, I, I tell people even now, I go, if you want to try to attack Flat Earth, boy, you better be ready. Because you're probably going to get sucked in. It's like the La Brea tar pits down in California. You know, you're going to get pulled in, and then people that are following you, it's just this endless stream of people going into the tar pit. So I started to debunk it in the middle of summer of 2014, and I was stubborn, did not have a lot of material to work with. Heck, I even joined one of the Flat Earth Societies just, just for resource material, and that turned out to be nothing. And I did that for nine months, off and on, you know, doing, doing other things, play, drinking wine, playing video games, living in Colorado, enjoying myself. Yeah. The same thing was always in the back of your head. You can't get it out. That's, that's the part I, I warn people. I go, look, it's like a marble in a paint can. You are not going to shake that thing out. It is in there once it's in there. It's kind of like uh, um, the movie Inception. With that brilliant movie where it's like, look, once you put the idea into someone's head, that's all you have to do. And you just walk away. So I did, I, I was trying to debunk it, trying to hammer on it. And every, every road I went down, every string I pulled on led to more and more questions. Kind of like what you guys, it's like, you, you the, the concept, the concept is easy. This thing's easy to understand. It's like, look, there it is. A little blue disc, <laughs> piece of cake, right? But then... Once you start staring at it, you, you realize, okay, what about this? What about this? What about this? And it just follows up with endless questions, which is one of the reasons this thing resonates so well. The, the initial concept is easy to get in your head, but once it's in your head, then you have a whole many more questions. And when I was trying to decipher those questions, I realized after a while that I was losing, like like anyone. Uh, the t One of the t-shirts should read, uh, I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk it and I failed. Everybody who's in the community, nobody thinks it's a good idea. Everybody starts out thinking it is a suck idea. It, do not. It's, it's the worst thing ever. But eventually, and everyone's got their own timetable, eventually everybody in the community just gave up. It's like, okay, I'm tired of pulling on strings. And that's what I did. I flipped in February of 2015 where I woke up, if you remember the movie, Jerry Maguire, and being that you're women, you probably do remember that movie because all women, it's like, you had me at hello. Anyway, so I had that Jerry Maguire moment. Remember the beginning of the movie where he wakes up and says, I'm going to basically screw up my career. <laughs> Write the big <laughs> manifesto and throw it out there. That's what I did. I, I woke up at literally like 3.30 in the morning, February 10th. I remember it vividly where I woke up and was going, I'm going the other direction with this now. I'm going to, the, the, the scales had tipped and now I'm going to say, oh, you know what? I'm not, I don't believe I can, I can prove the globe anymore. And I'm going to make a video. I, I didn't know how many I was going to make. It was just, but I, but it was some of the most clear writing I've ever done in my life to where I you know, sat down at the computer and it just started typing and, and, uh, you know, paragraph after paragraph. And I knew where the paragraph breaks were going to be. And I, cause I realized it's like, okay, I'm going to narrate this thing. So I typed it typed it all out one fell swoop and you didn't go back and really change much of anything and then i uh what was that in the background oh we're in the library <laughs> oh okay i was wondering wow, what's getting moved past her so i um uh i ended up narrating it and it was kind of like remember forrest gump, i knew i will throw a lot of movie references i absorbed a ton of media it was like forrest gump it's like well i ran to the you know the coastline might as well just turn around and run back. That's what it's like. So I was like, okay, well, I narrated it. Might as well attach slides. And now that I have this attached slides, might as well put it into a you know, video maker and let's let's turn it into a video. And I put out the first clue and it was basically a challenge to the internet hive mind. Prove me wrong. Because I can't do this on my own anymore. I cannot prove it's a globe anymore. Prove me wrong. And I honestly hoped that it would get shot down because part of me it was a weird paradox where if you've ever taken like a blue book test or, or a test where it doesn't even have to be a blue book test um where you think you've crushed it right it's like yeah i got this but there's something in the back of your head going did i because you want 100 percent and you're going oh did i get them all or did i miss one because you know then it's like 99 it's like oh but that's what i felt like I, when i put the video out there i'm going i think i've got it but you don't know for sure 
uh, like anybody that does any sort of project, you don't know if it's going to resonate. And I thought for sure that some academic, somebody with an astrophysics degree or an astronomy degree or some master's degree in some physical science, is going to call me up and say, okay, here's where you went wrong. You forgot to carry the two. You can shut down your YouTube channel, go home, and get back, get back to drinking wine and playing video games. And the exact opposite happened to where all of a sudden I had people calling me up almost to me because again I put my phone number and my email address one of the worst mistakes I've ever done <laughs> but but it was done deliberately because I said well people if I need to get the answers people are gonna have to contact me so literally in the first section of the first video I said oh yeah yeah by the way here's my phone number call you probably won't uh, yeah, yeah I can't even answer this thing anymore it's it's the, still the real phone number you can call it it's ring I can't answer it anymore I look for calls that look like they may maybe media because they have weird numbers, but for the most part, I, I can't. Uh, and then subject matter experts started calling me up, and then people started calling me up for interviews, and holy smokes, here we are a couple years later. The conference just finished mm -hmm. down in Raleigh, and it's, yeah, it's getting to the point now where I am just a part, a humble part, of wherever we are now. So, sorry, that's my that's my long little intro. Oh, no, it's great. <laughs> you mentioned the conference. What happens at the Flat Earth International Conference? <laughs> well, you're speaking about it like it's a, like it's a regular thing. It's, oh, another conference. <laughs> you know, it's the first one ever in the history, the 241 history, uh, year history of the United States and 500 years of Western civilization. I mean, in modern times, it's the first one that's ever happened. In this particular conference, it was really a big pep rally where we had a whole bunch of speakers. I was one of them. I was one of the keynote speakers. I got to go have my own Q&A, which was fun. Most of the others had like multiple people to buffer it out. But I was like, look, I answer questions. That's what I do. Uh, it's, that's all I've done. I've done 100 and I did 14 interviews while I was there. So maybe 150, 160 interviews at this point. And everyone was there just it was basically a big validation ceremony everybody came up and 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 it wasn't for the the newbies it wasn't for the people that that you know you don't necessarily walk into that convention not being in it so there was most of it was mostly hardcore members from from all over the place and it would there were q a sessions there were a lot of slideshows a lot of powerpoint presentations uh, some religious overtones, of course, because the promoters or producers, uh, when it started out, really, is more of a Christian conference than anything else. And then eventually we, we capped it off with the video awards show at the very end where we, we honored people that made YouTube content. And I was one of the hosts for that, which was fun. Yeah. Hey, um, I guess... <laughs> The next question will be like, why? Um, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. There's no question too dumb. Yeah. Um, why do you believe like government and scientists hide something like this? Like why? Something like this or just something, anything in general? Or oh, just, hide <laughs> specifically like this. Something like this. This yeah. is something that was so big. Even I, and I, I've been not shy about saying this because I like putting myself on the other side of the chessboard. Uh, there are some secrets that you cannot risk telling the public. It's too big they're, they're, because you, you, you run the risk of not necessarily the collapse of civilization, but an unordered restructuring of it. So what I've learned about men in power when you get up to a certain level is they don't take chances. You just do not, you cover your ass and you do not take chances. If there is a chance, even a, actually it's mob mentality. The mob sort of has the same thing, but really at any level of power, when you get that high, it's like, if there's a chance that you that witness is going to talk, you take care of the witness. If there's a chance that that's going to break it, you, you, oh, in fact, you know what a good analogy, I just thought of this while, you, while I was talking to you guys, it would be, um, uh, airline, uh, maintenance. So, you know, like with car maintenance, it's different from, from airline maintenance. Car maintenance is like you wait till it breaks. You know, the, the, the a fuel pump goes down. It's like, oh, uh, you know, fuel, fuel pump breaks. But you can't wait for that to happen in the airline industry because you're up in the air. You know, you get part breaks in the air. You're, you're, in, you're in really rough shape. So what they do is they literally base it on time. They say it doesn't matter what it looks like. 
the it's based on statistics. So if this piece wears out after a certain amount of time, you make sure that part is replaced. It's it'd be the ultimate car maintenance. So if the fuel pump only lasts a year, nine months in, that fuel pump's being replaced. They don't care what it looks like. You replace it. So circling back to this, this thing was so big that the chances. Even though it's a small percentage, the, chance, the population may run around with pitchforks and torches and burn the universities down. No, I don't think that would happen. But there, you know, people do funny things if they feel they've been lied to. And I know you guys aren't aren't necessarily old enough, but uh, if you've ever run into people that have had spouses that have cheated on them, okay, depending on how long they've cheated on them, depends on the severity of the revenge. So if your husband cheated on you and he's only been doing it for six months, yeah, you're going to get mad and it's probably going to be a divorce. If he's been doing it for 15 years, oh, that's a whole other ballgame. So imagine, if you will, uh, imagine, if you will, the, um, the whole institution of science. Most of it, and I don't have a globe in front of me. I probably should have grabbed one. It's in my bag. Uh, the whole institution of science being based on a globe. Right, it's been going for better part of five hundred years. Copernicus, that whole thing. I don't care if you want to talk about Aristotle and shadows and sticks and all that stuff. That's fine. But Copernicus is mostly known for this. If you if you disagree and say, well, no, the Greeks and two thousand years ago, it's like, well, fine, throw Copernicus out. But I don't want to get into that. Think about it like this. Before, and I'm, I'm bouncing around a little bit. Before NASA, how did anybody know it was a globe? Meaning, remember, the first blue marble shot was taken in 1972, but it's not like we woke up in 1972 and says, oh, wow, the picture was taken. It's a globe. Thank God. We knew for 25 generations. How did you know? You knew because you were told. Plain and simple. It's not, and, and scientists can use geometry and trig all they want, but that's the only thing they had. Nobody was high enough to take the picture. In fact, George Orwell, famous author who wrote 1984, uh, he made an interesting, he's not a flat earther, but he made an interesting point. He was talking about the responsibility of science, how we just believe whatever they tell us, whatever they come up with, and they've taken some massive leaps of faith. You want to talk, talk to me about the boiling temperature of water at sea level? Fine, I get that because I can test that. You want to tell me what the core of the earth looks like? No, <laughs> because the deepest hole ever drilled was eight miles. And yet you keep showing us that cross section. It drives me insane. I'm sorry. I'm bouncing around. George Orwell said in 1946, he said, it's an interesting response. Interesting what science has done to people. You could go to the average person on the street and say, hey, how do you know the earth is a globe? First response, first response. It's always the same. Well, we know. Duh. It's like a given in algebra. We just know it's a globe. It's like, really? And then he goes, and then press them on it. Say, how do you know? They start getting angry. What's interesting about that is that article was written in 1946. NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So how did the entire world know that it was a globe? It was because it was told to you. So we'll circle back to your question, your initial question. Why would you hide it? Think of it like this. The narrative is too far. There's sometimes, if you know enough storylines, enough plot lines, the narrative has gone too far that you can't go back. Uh, a small example of that would be the Catholic Church. Let's say the Catholic Church found in a cave in a papyrus scroll that the Virgin Mary's name was actually Susan. Would they tell you? No, they would not. It is too far along. What you don't know doesn't hurt you. The Virgin Susan will never be talked about because it's just too far along. The narrative is too far. You, you can't, it's like, look, how many books would you have to change? And that, think about that. That's just a name for one religion, one out of the big five, right? And they would not. Look, power, power corrupts people and they don't, people protect their own. People protect their own institutions. Uh, another quick example. In fact, it was a headline just a couple days ago. The Justice League movie's coming out. I used to own a comic book shop, so I'm, I, this meant a lot to me. Justice, Justice League movie's coming out, and yet Rotten Tomatoes, which I'm sure you know about, Rotten Tomatoes did not publish the reviews. Remember, that's a collection of all the newspapers everywhere and all the web stuff. Would not publish the reviews. Why? Because Time Warner, the company that made the movie, also owns a part share in Rotten Tomatoes. 
<laughs> it, it, it's it's a conflict of interest, which is like, okay, what happens if we, we release the reviews on time? Well, we could lose, I don't know, at least $10 million in, in revenue because people are going to say, oh, it's 30-something percent. It sucks. I'm not going. I'm going to buy the DVD. That's an easy decision to make. It's like, look, $10 million. All we have to do is, oh, I don't know, step on freedom of the press for two seconds and yeah. and basically say no newspaper things are going to get funneled. That's what we're talking about here, freedom of the press. Those reviews don't get in. And... It is, and, and of course, Fox News picked up on this, and then the story ended up breaking, and it's like, okay, we got to release it now, and anyway, we're, we're busted. But they tried. It was like, even in now, in this media world, they tried. Okay, so, circling way back, <laughs> why would you do this? Why would you keep it a secret? Imagine the institution of science, the narrative, talking for 20, 25 generations, this globe. It's globe, it's globe, it's globe, it's globe. Your fathers and your and her fathers and I'm sorry, mothers, fathers, doesn't really matter. Your parents and their parents going back so far that your family tree is just a blur, right? And then they get up high enough to take the picture and they realize it's not. Do they tell people? No, they do not. I if I was in that meeting, I wouldn't even waver on it. It's like, no. Three reasons academically, economically, spiritually. We'll take academically first. Literally, and I said this in the clues, literally overnight, all universities change literally overnight. Astrophysics and astronomy, those programs don't even open in the morning. Those guys are gone. They don't get to go to class anymore. Uh, the remaining physical sciences, uh, geology, hydrology, biology, archaeology, any, anything with an ology next to it, they have to really be retooled and rebuilt. And, and some people, somebody, somebody actually challenged me. So, well, biology, not as much. I'm going, well, yeah, you still got to rebuild biology. Because you still base everything is still all the models are based on the globe. Economically, you would have to shut down world markets for a month at least. I mean, world stock markets would have to close. Never, you know, never happened in the history of the world. I mean, for God's sakes, if Donald Trump caught pneumonia tomorrow and he was expected to die, the markets, as you know, the U.S. markets would just start fluctuating, and then everybody else would would reverberate based off the U.S. markets. So telling people that the world is in the shape, because remember, there's lots of industries that don't wouldn't know what to do in something like that. Uh, we, and this also dovetails into the spiritual side, meaning if we are all in one big planetarium, one sports stadium, one big Hollywood backlot, do you go to war with the next? Do you keep firing those cannons across? Because remember, it's not just that you know that you're firing cannons against somebody that's you know, potentially your brother or your cousin. There's probably, you know, it also ties into uh, the, the, big, the big thing, the big thing why this thing resonates right here, which is if this is real, then you're not alone. You never have been alone. Now, I'm not going to say, you know, it's the handprint of God that, you know, I'm not going to be that bold because then I'd have to define God. I'm not going to do it here. There's five religions. They all got a piece of the puzzle. But if you're not alone, well, then there's been somebody looking over your shoulder for a while. And at that point, are you still going to do the bad things? And you say, what do you mean? I'm going, okay, the Santa Claus naughty and nice list, right? Means nothing until you see Santa Claus eating cookies in your living room. Then it does. And it's like, ah, crap, I can't do anything naughty ever again in my life. So that, I mean, you, between those three things, that meeting, as far as how to keep this thing a secret 60 years ago, that meeting is 10 minutes long. They're say, basically rolling over what we just talked about, which is like, okay, what's the worst that could happen? Well, it's like, oh, I don't know, academia, economic collapse, uh, religion, all of a sudden deciding they, they're going to start hanging scientists in the streets. Not to say they do it, but it's 2017. Like, we wouldn't do that, right? Yeah, it could happen. If people do weird things, especially when it comes to revenge, there's a lot of, I mean, let's face it, there's some church congregations out there who would love nothing more. To get their hands. It's like, what's the closest university? Get the guns. Let's go. It would. It could. It could be bad. So uh, I put that in the clues. I said, look, you know, religion should show some restraint. I know you want to grab Neil deGrasse Tyson and do horrible things to him. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't be those guys. Don't. You know, it's, this isn't the Dark Ages or the Renaissance. Well, no, Dark Ages or um, the Inquisition, the Crusades. Yeah, those were fun times, weren't they? And that was back when the you know the church ran things compared to you know science. Yeah, I mean, look, science has created a lot of wonderful things, but they've also taken leaps of faith. Um, my big beef with science, and I don't know if it's on your question list, is they tend to look. They're men. 
you guys are you guys get a pass women absolutely get a pass men have have created horrible <laughs> conditions in the world they have uh it, people say why do you keep giving you know women a pass i go oh i don't know ever wonder why most of the bank tellers are women it's because they don't create they don't do many crimes they don't by comparison men they think of it it's like oh yeah, i'm totally doing this and put some alcohol in them it gets worse sorry i digress <laughs> so anyway uh, now that I've driven completely off road with this, <laughs> that's the answer to the question. It would it potentially it could be really really bad, and I know some people say, "Well, it wouldn't be that." Oh no, it would. If you think about it long enough, it absolutely would. So there you go. Um, I just uh, I watched all of Clues last night, getting ready for this. Oh, the first the time question. you <laughs> watched the Clues for the first time. Oh my God, that's great. Um. I'm just curious about your thoughts on the moon landing. <laughs> <laughs> the moon landing. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Honestly, that's the first person any time I think anyone's actually asked me that point blank. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the moon landing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Judging from what you, you probably can anticipate my answer based on what I've talked about so far. Not only... Uh, it's worse than you know. That's a Tom Cruise line. For, it's, it's worse than, than, you, than you know. Not only was the Apollo program completely fabricated, I'm saying it goes way, way deeper than that, meaning that the only reason NASA was created, period, was to keep this thing under wraps. You had to militarize space as soon as humanly possible, meaning you couldn't let private corporations go up there. And you, they held on to that for a long time. I know you got Virgin Galactic now and SpaceX and Elon Musk. May he die horribly one day. Uh, but the the Apollo program aged. You got to remember, before this, I was never a big believer in the moon landing. That was one of those early conspiracies that came out. There's a lot of people that don't believe in the moon landing, and I was one of those guys way before flat Earth. That's like well, because the the all the footage aged and the pictures aged so horribly, and there were so many inconsistencies over the years. But for me, uh, it bugged it bugged it bugged me because I didn't have a good enough reason why you would fake the moon landing it's like yeah yeah i get it america you know we're in america go team rah rah you know wave the flag i get that but it was a good reason but it wasn't a great reason i didn't i didn't get that so this changed changed that narrative meaning you didn't i i completely understood i again put myself on the other side of the chessboard it's not that they wanted to fake the moon program they had to if you do not fake it, eventually you're talking about private corporations, big ones. Remember, NASA is just a collection of parts. The people that make those parts, Boeing, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, I mean, you know, the big military contractors, you don't want those guys teaming up with somebody down the road and actually doing this. So like um, having Boeing team up with Frito-Lay to put a big Frito-Lay banner on the moon, you know they'd do it if they wanted to. It's like, let's just get up there, you know, first commercial thing on the you know and all of a sudden the moon is just this big walking billboard their strategy was very very sound and that is okay we've got to release the picture this is where it gets weird remember there was only one picture of the earth from space from 1972 until two summers ago and that 1972 photo well yeah they could have you know airbrushed it photoshop didn't exist back then could have computer graph not even computers airbrushed it back then painted it whatever you want to do make a photo and and kind of alter it but how do you release it to the public it's not like you can just hand the public a photo and say oh yeah here's the picture of the earth because eventually that's what you got to do eventually you've got to when you do that you've got to justify it which means you've got to at least pretend that you, you create a program that gets you up high enough to at least say oh yeah we took the picture from up there it was the most expensive picture in the history of anything it was it was you had to create a rocket program based on you know world war ii missile technology by the germans that got up high enough to shoot the rocket up high enough and it's like oh yeah it got up there and then make up whatever story you want about where the rocket went and then eventually say you know release the picture so where was i going with that do you remember what the initial question was the moon landing <laughs> oh yeah, yeah i'm sorry the moon landing sorry so uh eventually sorry let me collect my thoughts for one second eventually that program has to be wiped out 
meaning you go there and you go, look how fast they went. They went like, what, six times in four years? <laughs> it's like, go, go, go. Nobody had a problem. Yeah, moon, it's great. Let's play golf. Let's bring a car up there. Let's bring two cars. How in the world are you doing that? You know, ignore all the physics and all the lighting problems and all the weird shadows and all this other stuff. Let's just do it. And then in 1972, it's, hey, it's boring. Nobody needs to go back there anymore. And we're done. Not to mention, let me throw this little thing in here, the space race. Again, you guys are really young. The space race supposedly was a real thing. But you know how the space race is supposed to go, right? It, you know, the Soviet Union's doing its thing. We're doing our thing. And it's like, first people to the moon. Except that for whatever reason, the Americans were the only ones that even tried for it. Oh, yeah, the Russians says they tanked something, you know, in the Sea of Tranquility, just cratered something. Nobody died. But here's where it gets weird. The space race just stopped. The Americans get there, and then the Russians just quit. Quit and never even bothered. You know how it was going. Look, it's a space race. It's a Cold War, right? So we put three people on the moon. They put four people. We put a small base. They put a bigger base. And then Time Magazine has the Cold War expanded to the moon. What will happen? You know, is the future? Is this the future of whatever? It's like that never happened. It never happened, and it was obvious why it couldn't happen. And that's because the two production teams, you know, one in the United States, one in Russia, there would be no consistency between the two. Meaning, if you have one faking one on one set and one faking on the other, remember, they have to be identical. Have to be identical. And it is almost in hell. We'd have a hard time with two studios next door to each other in Hollywood. That's why there are websites like MovieBloopers.com and MovieMistakes.com. It's all it takes is one nerd in the middle of Nebraska at 3 o'clock in the morning to look at something going, Hey, that flag moved. Or that flag, you know, that's a completely different place. Hey, I'm going to post this online, and that would be it. Every movie, just seriously, go to one of those moviemistakes.com sites. I mean, every major movie, especially as you start spending really, really big money, makes mistakes. Why do they make mistakes? Because everything is shot out of sequence. It's not shot in linear order to where it's like, okay, here's where the hero starts, and they just, no, it's done to save money. We're going to shoot all the desert scenes at the same time. We're going to shoot all the boat scenes on the same time. To, to make because it costs a lot of money to do that stuff you can't just pack up and redo and, and go back to the same set that's why they do it but while they're doing that they make mistakes and if they have to reshoot scenes they make mistakes the point is is that eventually you've got to kill the the, the moon program quickly because you're already pressing your luck and they already made mistakes anyway what they didn't count on was high-speed internet photoshop where you can drag stuff in so sorry that was my long-winded answer <laughs> to the moon is a piece of crap and you can look at i look i could send you one photo right now literally one photo on my desktop shoot it over to you and i bet you you would start scratching your head in about 10 seconds it's that bad there you go Um, I guess earlier you were talking about um, how if if the secret came out, um, academia would change a lot. So, I mean, I'm just wondering, did you attend a university? I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a good question because some people will say, it's like, what's your educational background? <laughs> uh, I drank my first year of college uh, over in uh, Washington State uh, and, and threw away those tra transcripts. And then I went to Western Washington University up in Bellingham, Washington, near the Canadian board. Where are you guys, anyway? We're at Fort Collins, CSU. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I almost went to Western Washington, though. That's kind of Did funny. you? Yeah. Wow, small <laughs> world. Yeah, it, no, it was a great school. Uh, not, not necessarily, I mean, the academia program is fine, but I took summer quarters as well because it was a considered in Washington, it's not like UW or, or, or Washington State or anything it's considered like a, a weekday college because it's so close. It's right on the I-5 corridor. So people that went there were mostly from Seattle. So what do you think they did in the weekend? They went home. <laughs> they just, it's like, well, why do we have to stay up here? And so the, the campus just emptied out on every weekend. And summers, it was dead, even though it was beautiful weather. I mean, honestly, the best time to be up there was during the summers. So I took summers uh, up there. And then eventually... I was thrown out from manufacturing explosives on campus during the end of my junior year. Yeah, lots yeah. of people died. It was awful. No, no, I no nobody no nobody died, but uh, but I did do that. No, it was it, it's not as bad as you might think. It, I made fireworks. There's a lot of uh, Indian reservations up there, and by that I mean Casino American, not not the East Indian, and. I'm not being racist when I say that. There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of casinos up there. 
And I manufactured stuff for them, and I did it on campus. It was one of my things. And I, I was just, when you grow up in the Northwest, 4th of July is a big deal because it's wet, and you don't have to worry about fires, and there's never any restrictions. Uh, made it to my junior year. I was... I actually was was a decent student. I was just bored though, just restless, trying to trying to do things. And uh, no, I I was if I had graduated, it would have been in business administration. But that was a number of years ago. I was like one of the first kids on campus to even have a computer. You know, one of the early apples type thing. So that's what I did. That was my background <laughs> at campus anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess what. Like, what do you do for a living now? Are you still producing this content and making money off of that? Or? That's This is what I do now. Beforehand, mm -hmm. uh, I ended up, st I started my career playing video games for a living back in uh, back in the early, mid 90s. Uh, won a video game tournament. The company out of Boulder, Colorado. Because there's no game companies now. And this was most of, if you want to get into the gaming industry, it's all Southern California or Northern California. And they, I'd never been to Colorado before, and so I flew out during a blizzard. Thought I, honestly, I got on the wrong plane. I'd never seen snow like that, never seen people drive in snow like that. And it was, it was nutty, and they hired me on the spot, and I played games, and went to all the, the major conferences, you know, like Macworld, San Fran, and Boston, and E3, and, and it was a great time to be in the gaming industry. And they held out for a while. They had an arbitration issue with one of their Japanese developers, and eventually that led to the demise of the company. And then I transferred over and taught proprietary software. In it was yeah, we were based in Boulder. It was a time and attendance company, two two time and attendance companies actually, which is weird. And I flew around the com country teaching people really dry, complex software. I had I learned the ability to break down concepts into really easy to digest pieces, which was good because I was doing a lot of blue collar, color factories. Time and attendance is just time clock software. Mm -hmm. so, you, so whenever you're punching into something, you swipe the badges and instead of punching in a clock, you know, actual paper clock. That was during the era when everybody was switching from paper to digital. And that's what I did until I got into this. And now, yeah, this is what I do. 900 videos later in a book and <laughs> two radio shows and all sorts of fun stuff and who knows what's what's coming next awesome yeah I mean, I don't... ask I, I don't we're trying to think anything more you answered pretty well, much all what, of, yeah. is there anything off the top of your head that uh, something came to mind while you were looking at this the motivation uh, where do I see it going um, what what type of people are in it? Uh, yeah, yeah, what? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> what type of people are, are in this? Mostly escaped mental patients. It's, <laughs> not gonna lie to you. It's <laughs> it's seriously. I mean, I actually saw a couple guys. The jackets, the old, the jackets were still in the car. Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. Uh, mo it's a really interesting cross section because most of the conspiracy world is male dominated because it's dark. Again, Heath Ledger, Batman type people. You know, it's like. In fact, when when Flat Earth came on the scene, it was kind of considered uh, it, it kind of like a anomaly, kind of an abomination because it wasn't dark. It was kind of happy. You know, the message of hope. It's like, hey, you're not alone. Cool, great. People are writing songs about. It. There's 200 Flat Earth songs in the catalog right now. How did? When do you ever see that? You find me a happy folk song about 9/11. You know, and the buildings came down, you know, nobody, nobody's going to sing happy songs about that. But, and so people uh, in the community you know, conspiracy guys were looking at this saying, oh, you know, I like, I like my conspiracies dark and brooding like Batman and this isn't. And so we, we got the demographics changed. We had younger people, we had older people, uh, a lot more women way more women than uh, when if you saw pictures of the conference I mean there was a lot of people that went with their wives or husbands and that's surprising and that for me also let me know it was resonating because women have a built-in BS detector you know they do they, you know where they look there's a reason why any sales and I won't I won't be crude there's a, like any sales team they'd say do not 
uh, solicit women when you get a chance because women won't do that knee jerk impulse that men is like, yeah, I'll buy it, whatever you're selling. You know, women would be like, hmm, mm hmm, nah. <laughs> Yeah. It, so when women look at this, I mean, I get a lot of emails from and, and voicemails and they say, they say, oh yeah, you know, it left me with some sort of uh, uh, feeling like it wasn't a dark, horrible thing. And so that, that part was really encouraging to me, but yeah, it's, it's different than the normal conspiracy crowd. Yeah. The, the people that are involved. How does a like flat earth society meeting look like, is it mostly discussion based? Oh. Yeah. You know what, by the way, I should clarify that the Flat Earth Society has almost nothing to do with this with this new community. We have I won't I won't use the word transcended because that sounds religious, uh, but we we've blown by them. We never needed them. Social media changed the game. Yeah, the, the old Flat Earth Society, the old guard that's been around forever. A few guys, you know, there's not their, their numbers were not very big when I joined that group or one of the groups. I thought it was really unusual that there were trolls there hanging out literally in the flat earth forums just just like like people at the velvet rope just waving people off just saying oh yeah it's nothing to see here so when this thing took off i mean i'm not kidding you at the convention i don't think anybody at that convention was i definitely know none of the presenters were were tied to the flat earth societies because we didn't need them we went straight to social media between twitter and youtube and facebook and anything else that you can get your hands on there was no need to sign up for a full-blown website it's like oh the flat earth website you know the crux of, of of the research no no no. we we didn't need them we didn't talk to them in fact i had some of the flat earth society guys call me and say oh hey would you, would you be willing to endorse it and i'm going I, to be perfectly blunt man uh you're a little late to the game because it's like look if, if like this guy over here's got eighty thousand subscribers why do we need you no offense and so now they're just struggling yeah of course the media is going to latch on to it you know because it's the old flat earth society that's kind of tied directly to it sorry what was the initial question oh i'm just curious like how like it looks, I guess, the Flat Earth Society. But. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not it, It's not even, it's not part. In fact, during the entire conference when I was there and I came early and left late, there were, none of the reps were there. None of them, we, we didn't talk to any of them. Why, why would we? I didn't, we it, literally social media has given you the ability now to create platforms out of thin air. And you don't, I mean, we all know it. I mean, look at freaking PewDiePie. You know, on, on YouTube, it's like, 50 number one channel on youtube 50 million yeah he's got a huge marketing machine behind him but that makes my point which is you can create a media sensation out of literally nothing as long as you've got a marketing machine that believes in it and we did ours i mean uh, the numbers speak for themselves when you looked into youtube two years at the beginning of 2015 you typed in flat earth and you maybe got 50,000 search results you do that this morning i think it's at 18.1 million it's ridiculous. And we did that with no budget at all. I mean, shoestrings. It was just resonance. That's all it did, where it was just, people were just catching on to it. And now we've gotten to the point where we, uh, we're, we're almost at a tipping point where it's become the kind of, I call it, I use, some people call it the Flat Earth Religion. I like to call it the Flat Earth University. But the one I've had fun with is the Flat Earth Drug Deal, which is, you know, so you're into conspiracies, right? I got something for you. Hey, be cool. Be cool. I don't give this to just everybody. You know, it's flat earth. <laughs> and you're like, don't take too much. Don't take too much. <laughs> right? right? And you didn't get it from me type of thing. And that's really what it comes down to. There's all sorts of conspiracy guys where that conversation comes into play. Where it's like, oh, yeah, what are you into? Yeah, and you know, rattle off your conspiracy. It's like, oh, I got something for you. Yeah, you're not going to be able to handle it. <laughs> and, and, you know, the other side's like, Oh, whatever I can totally handle it it's like no Dan you can't in fact I'll, I'll give you a story real quick uh, there was a when I was flying back from the conference which was uh, fun in itself because there were flat earthers the entire way home so flat earthers in the airport flat earthers at the gates flat, flat earthers in my plane and you know flying back to Seattle I was sitting next to this woman because now I'm just using reverse psychology. There, I was sitting next to this woman. Uh, it was a six-hour flight from uh, the corner, you know, the East Coast all the way up to, to Seattle. Because you're going against the headwinds. And it, you know if you've ever been on an airplane where you fly the entire thing, you're not talking to them. 
it's like you see him over there and so it's like me empty middle seat her against the window and five hours and change we're not even talking you know it's like oh yeah hand you the drink cup and the empty pretzel bag and stuff like that and nodding you know but but you're not talking to them and meanwhile during that flight people are coming up to me you know we're handing out t-shirts they're shaking my hand people that hadn't met me in the conference and 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 finally she cracks at about 15 minutes to, to wheels down she she goes hey i don't want to be forward or anything but i gotta know i see that people are like coming up to you they know you in this plane you go, what's the deal with your t-shirt right because i'm wearing a, a flat earth army shirt kind of I, you probably can't see this one very well it's, it's, i get t-shirts all the time i'll never have to buy a t-shirt again in my life so <laughs> Uh, it's flat earth army shirt and I go and I, I was I just I was just messing with her I'm going you know what I don't really want to tell you it's like <laughs> you seem like a cool person you really don't want to go down this road it, this ride is not for the faint of heart so you know maybe maybe we just didn't talk about it she goes and you know how that works and some people's like no 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 I need to know I need to know I'm going are you sure because you know I tell you this and you're gonna lose sleep it's it's not gonna be it's not gonna be easy for you. and she just couldn't take it after a while and she's just like look just just freaking tell me I'm like, all right all right I'm gonna tell you I might give her my nickel tour you know the wheel you know wheels down we're, we're gliding into this thing and I in about 10 minutes you could see her eyes just getting bigger and bigger and bigger to where she she goes okay okay look I know we're landing but she was she's scrambling for a piece of paper and a pen she goes just 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 write down whatever you contact info, information you can and i just wrote flat earth clues didn't even put my name and i go here's what's gonna happen in about two weeks you're gonna call me when you do remind me in the email that we sat next to each other on the plane that way at least i know you know who you were because i get a lot of emails she goes okay okay and that was it and and she goes off i mean i can tell she was she's doomed so and again you watched the clues first time last night regardless what your opinion is and i'll tell you the same thing if you like your life the way it is and i i will say this to anyone that's out there you think you got a good beat on things you wake up it's like everything's great don't do it don't look into this because if you do if you go down this rabbit hole it turns into a journey that when you get on the other side you look back and you go holy crap it's, you know then and then you want and then it gets bad because then and then all of a sudden you feel like nobody else around me knows i gotta tell somebody but who do i tell who do i trust do i trust anybody why am i talking to myself i don't know it gets weird a after that but that's that's and it, everybody runs into that so I didn't just warn you, you know, I don't care, you know, you might have a science background. Look, unless the only people that are completely do doomed are, um, you hear feedback? That's weird. That's right. Uh, wow, that's weird. I'm getting a little bit of feedback on my side. Here, tap your, tap your microphone. Or, or is it just a laptop? It's just on a laptop. All right, right, no biggie. Um, no, it's gone now the uh there wasn't a conspiracy there were actually every once in a while you get that weird <laughs> <laughs> did you hear that <laughs> spiders all over me <laughs> the uh um sorry i lost my train of thought it it's it is a weird journey and i don't recommend to anybody or to, to everybody because look if, oh, seriously it, I, i've seen it change people's lives what usually happens is they start going down your road why i have to mention you and you lose sleep because you start watching more and more and more and more and more videos because you have the questions you want answers. It's like, well, the answer has to be out there somewhere. So you just keep watching more and more stuff. And then eventually you realize that you've just done like a, a people are kind of used to binge watching things anyway nowadays. It's like, oh, let's do Netflix for four days. But this is kind of like that where they, they, they start binge watching and there's so much content now between before uh, back in 2015 you had to really look for stuff you know you you saw it was only like 20 40 videos and now literally if you like you put it in quotes i think there's over a million flat earth videos out there hey yeah there's some pro some con but that's you're never going to get through them in your lifetime so you kind of have to hope that i put together just you know and i know you got probably want to get out of here because i'm rattling off too much the um 
there's a uh, all you have to do is type in i recommend this for most people that are just getting into it because it's it's a fairly concise list and it's not me it's most it's it's not just me rattling on uh type in flat earth shortlist into youtube and it's a collection of maybe 20 videos really great introductions by a whole bunch of different people ranging in size from five minutes to a couple hours and i tell people anyone that that calls me or contacts me and says i'm just getting into this all right here look at the shortlist there's got to be something there you're interested in after you go through that you might have some questions uh, usually what that does though is it, it gets them i I'm, I'm glad it works out the way it does because i don't get just overwhelmed with the same questions all the time if you watch enough of the vids that are out there you'll you'll get most of the answers so anywho <laughs> so what are you guys doing with this just doing a little yeah, for um, like a final project, and we're both journalism yeah. students. Um, oh, so cool! For... You should have fun with this one then. Yeah. Well, no, because it's trendy at the moment. You you couldn't ask for a, a better timing. I don't know when you're going to present it. Uh, the yeah. uh, I'll give you I'll give you a heads up real quick if you want to use clips and stuff. The and by the way, if you want resources or photos or anything, I can send stuff through you through WeTransfer. All sorts of fun, fun things. Yeah. Uh, but there's let's see the big interviews are coming out this weekend so abc nightline is coming out this weekend hbo vice is coming out uh and then all you know nstv and buzzfeed and german television and all the other newspapers but all you literally have to do if in google right now because it's tied to the conference wait how, by the way how'd you find out about this just google <laughs> no all right all right i figured that but well, but how I what 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 pro i gotta ask what what yeah. prompted you um fort collins has a kind of large flat earth society and i work for the school newspaper here and oh they did a story yeah 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 part really of the meetups yeah <laughs> you so yeah you've been uh, hearing about this yeah out there so um well, did we, you had, we heard about them and then through research we just kind of like googled flat earth into or typed into youtube and you came up and we were like let's talk yeah, to this yeah. guy did you, so you saw the denver post article yes they came out yeah i had that's by the way he's one of ours the uh what's that line from james bond i which i love so much because i'm waiting to use it on some side it's just like the thing about us is we have people everywhere <laughs> we do i mean that guy he we had never talked to him before and i could tell when he was when he was taught when we were chatting it's like oh yeah all right and we got it when one of our guys the boston globe that story's coming out i think this weekend uh, and that and that helps but yeah when they when they ran that story that started a chain reaction because look if you're in the front page of the Denver Post it's like okay it's weird but what happens most people don't know is people peer groups review other peer groups so the Houston Chronicle the Boston Globe the Washington Post the New York Times everybody checks to see what everybody else is running and when the Denver Post instead of running a story on Trump <clears throat> snore you know they decide to run you know a flat earth story other people are going what in the heck is good you know, are we into flat earth you know what, what do we do what are we doing on flat earth what, what sort of representation do we have there and it started a series of events to where now uh the only in fact i did a cnn interview a couple months ago but they they're sitting on it i it was a 45 minute interview and i knew he took tons of notes and he is sitting on it. i do not know why if that thing comes out it's it's going to be really really cool so i'm glad i'm glad you guys uh got i mean colorado is a perfect place and you know there were two it used to be three now there's two because i'm up in seattle uh two of the presenters from the conference are there no i'm sorry one of the presenters is there the other guy decided to back out of the conference i don't know why uh but if you ever want contact if you ever want to talk to somebody you know like live and in person there's people i can put you in touch with so yeah yeah. yeah, we'd love that. That'd be awesome. I will tell. So here's what I'll do for you, just to make it fun. I will send you some slides through WeTransfer. I'll use some of the background slides that were done by another guy, a friend of mine named David Weiss. Some great stuff. That way, you don't have to like poke around and look for images all the time. Because people type in flat Earth, there's so many images out there. But I can send you a whole slew of stuff. So you you'll get that this morning. That'd be really awesome. good. Yeah, thank you again yeah, so much so for doing much. We appreciate it. I am thrilled to to have done it with you guys. And if you need anything else, let me know. Uh, you don't have to send me a copy of whatever you're you're doing. 
uh, just have fun with it and just to convince him, look, he's a real guy. He's, he's not yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's not messing around. Yeah, go to the BBC thing. Uh, hopefully, there'll be more media over the weekend. So when do you think you're, you'll present? Um, most likely the weekend after Thanksgiving yeah. is when like this is due. Yeah. Oh, deal. cool. So, yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right, well, have fun with it. And yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks very much, guys. Yeah, yeah thanks thank so you. Much. All right, have a good one. Yeah, you, you too. too. Bye-bye.